I've passed coding interviews at a ton of big tech companies, and I've helped thousands of people learn data structures and algorithms, both online and in person. But I made a lot of mistakes along the way. So in this video, I want to go over how exactly I would learn data structures if I could start all over again. So first, just to understand what exactly it is that we are trying to learn about, I would define a data structure simply as a way to store and organize data or just some values in our code. And each of these different types of data structures are going to have different trade-offs based on what that data actually looks like and what operations we might need to do on that data. And the scale of data structures, as we sometimes talk about it with regard to things like coding interviews, is really just the skill of choosing the correct data structure to use for some given scenario. Now, my general philosophy around learning data structures is that it should be mostly done in a programming language agnostic way. And what I mean by this is simply that the fundamentals of data structures have nothing to do with the programming languages that you're actually using. Of course, you are going to need to write some code in some language to actually practice, but what language that is shouldn't matter all that much. What we care about is just how we are actually structuring the data, and that can be accomplished in pretty much any programming language. In fact, one thing that surprised me when I took data structures in college was that the class involved almost no coding. Yes, we had some coding assignments where we had to actually practice, but in the lectures, they almost never showed any code because the core concepts actually don't have all that much to do with coding at all. But with that said, to get a little bit more concrete, how we would actually go about learning data structures is to take a two-stage approach. So the first stage is going to be to get a breadth of knowledge. So to get a basic understanding of what all of the major data structures are and what some of their use cases might be. And the second stage is to go more in depth on each individual individual data structure. So for each one, what I would do is make sure you know how to implement it from scratch and then make sure you understand what the trade-offs are. So when shouldn't you be using it and when should you be using it? And then finally, also make sure that you are familiar with the major sort of famous algorithms associated with that data structure and that you know how to implement them if you need to. Now, as far as the order to actually learn the data structures, it honestly doesn't matter too much, but I would usually start with arrays just because they tend to be the most basic of the data structures and most likely if you've done any programming, you've already encountered them. And really all you need to understand about arrays in this first stage is simply that they represent a contiguous block of memory. And of course, you should also know how to use them in your chosen language. And once you understand arrays, I would move on to stacks and queues. At the surface level, these work pretty similar to each other, just with the key difference being how you actually remove elements. So a stack works similar to stacking playing cards or stacking books in the fact that the next element you remove is always going to be the last element that you just added. We sometimes refer to this as LIFO, meaning last in, first out. On the other hand, queues work just like a queue or a line in real life. Whoever gets in line first is usually the first person helped. So whatever element you add to a queue first is going to be the first element removed. We call this first in, first out, or FIFO. Next, what I'd look at is maps or dictionaries, as they're sometimes called, as well as sets. So a dictionary works similar to a dictionary in real life. It's simply key value pairs. So in a real dictionary, the keys are the words and the values are their definitions. And the same is essentially true in a dictionary in code, except that we can use whatever keys and values we want. There are some different types of dictionaries, but the key component to most of them is simply that the keys need to be unique. And that brings us to sets. And sets are interesting because essentially they're just a special case of maps. In particular, they are maps that just don't have values. In fact, some of the implementations of sets are simply maps where all of the values are just automatically set to null. But again, the keys have to be unique. So essentially a set is just a group of elements where there can't be any duplicates. From here, I'd move on to what we call linked data structures. So linked data structures are simply data structures composed of nodes. And each of these nodes typically has a value as well as they can have links to other nodes in the data structure. And these these links are going to come in the form of references or pointers to other nodes. The most basic of these is known as a linked list. So a linked list is simply a bunch of different nodes and each node has a value, but then each node also has a reference to the next node in the list. And if you follow these from node to node, you get a full sequence of values. But the interesting thing about linked lists is that they are actually just a special case of what we call a tree. So a tree data structure is again, just a bunch of nodes and each node typically has a a value. 
But instead of having just a next pointer to the next node in the list, a tree node can have multiple pointers to what we call its children nodes. So a linked list is a special case of a tree in the sense that a linked list is simply a tree where each node only has one child. But what's interesting about trees is that they are actually just a special case of a graph. So a graph is another linked data structure, but whereas trees have this sort of parent-child relationship that can't be broken, so you can't have like loops in a tree, a graph doesn't have this restriction. So each node in a graph has what we call edges to other nodes, and these can go to any other node in the graph. Now, once you've gotten to this point, you should have a breadth of understanding of different data structures. But before moving on to developing a more in-depth understanding of each of these data structures, I would first make sure you also understand big O notation as well as complexity analysis. This is essentially just a fancy way of measuring the performance of algorithms as input sizes get very large. And in particular, we tend to use this big O notation as a way to describe the differences and sort of the trade-offs between different data structures. And now with this understanding of big O notation, it's time to go back through each individual data structure. And for each one, what I would do at this point is first of all, try implementing it from scratch. And then once you've done that, I would also quiz yourself on the different time complexities of all of the major operations like adding and removing elements. You also want to sort of develop a mental model for that data structure and what the common use cases tend to look like, as well as you'll want to learn how to actually use the built-in version of that data structure in whatever language you're using if there happens to be one. There also tends to be different variants of some of these data structures, so this can be a good time to also learn about those and what the trade-offs can be. Additionally, you'll want to know what the different algorithms are that are typically associated with that data structure as well as how to implement them. So starting back with arrays, one of the things I would learn is how array lists, as they're sometimes called, actually work. Essentially, these are just arrays that can get bigger automatically. Then as far as algorithms are concerned, the most important ones are probably going to be searching and sorting algorithms, such as binary search and merge sort. For stacks and queues, there's actually a few ways to implement them using either arrays or linked lists, so I would learn how to do both as well as I would learn how to use any built-in implementations of them in whatever languages you're using, if they happen to have them. And then of course, just get some practice actually using them and figuring out what the common use cases are for each of them. For maps and sets, I think the most important thing is going to be to understand how hash maps are actually implemented. In fact, I once had an interview where all they did was sit me down and ask me to implement a hash map from scratch. You can also look into some other types of maps like a tree map, which is going to have a trade-off in time complexity in exchange for keeping a sorted order. For linked lists, you've probably already implemented them, but what I would focus on for them is algorithms and the sort of algorithmic styles associated with them. For example, a common style for things like reversing a list is going to be to use two different pointers. There's also variants to learn about, such as a doubly linked list. So where nodes in a linked list just have pointers to the next node, nodes in a doubly linked list have pointers to that next node as well as to the previous node, which can be useful in certain circumstances. For trees, there's a ton of different variants, but the most important is going to be binary trees, which is simply just a tree where nodes can't have more than two children. And within binary trees, there's also binary search trees, which are simply binary trees that are in sort of a sorted order. Another category to look at is self-balancing trees, such as an AVL tree, or more specialized trees, such as a prefix tree. And as far as algorithms are concerned, I think the most important thing is to learn how to traverse the tree in three different ways, being pre-order, in-order, and post-order traversals, as well as how to search through the trees using two different methods known as breadth-first search and depth-first search. And for graphs, again, there's a bunch of different types. Some graphs have bi-directional edges, some don't. Some graphs have weighted edges, some don't. There's just a ton of different variants here to learn about. There's also two different main ways to actually implement a graph using either an adjacency list or an adjacency matrix, and you should learn how to do both. As far as algorithms are concerned, breadth first search and depth first search actually apply here as well, just in slightly different ways, as well as you should also probably learn some specialized algorithms, such as Dijkstra's algorithm for finding the shortest path between two nodes in a graph, or topological sort for essentially sorting the nodes. Now, as far as where to actually learn the information from, Honestly, I think the easiest way to learn data structures and algorithms and sort of the best way is in a traditional classroom. But if you don't have the opportunity to do that, there are still tons of great courses online, either for free on YouTube or paid courses elsewhere. Typically, what I would say though, is just try to go through more than one course, even if they're all free courses, to learn from different perspectives. I'll try to link some good ones in a pinned comment and you are welcome to add to them as well. And then after you do learn about data structures, you might want to use that information to pass a coding interview. And for that, you should watch this video next.